great to be here. And just in case uh, some of you are still wondering what the panda has got to do with construction in cities, let me give a brief background. So we work for a future where we live in harmony with nature, and we do this by protecting biodiversity and by seeking solutions to reduce our global ecological footprint. And the trends so far are not uh, favorable. We see in our biannual Living Planet report an accelerating loss of biodiversity and a constant growth of the ecological footprint. Uh, today being in the state where we use 50% more of the resource productive capacity and the carbon absorption capacity than what the Earth can sustain. And the size of our ecological footprint is determined by how we live. The fact that this, this is an urbanizing planet makes it clear that the design of cities will determine the global footprint and will also determine whether we win or lose our battle for a, harmony in fu uh, in, for a future in harmony with nature. You may already be aware that urban dwellers account for 70% or more than 70% of the global carbon emissions already, and the global urban population is set to double, almost double, by 2050, meaning that the urban area will more than double within that period of time, and that will be coupled with huge investments. Approximately 350 trillion US dollars are expected to be invested in urban infrastructure and its use over the next three decades. That's approximately five times the global GDP. Now, to put it bluntly, where this investment goes will determine whether billions of people will be locked into fossil fuel dependent and wasteful infrastructures and lifestyles, or if this investment can actually become the seed that can drive a transition of our cities into places where we all can live sustainable and attractive lives. Together with Booz and Company, WWF have assessed the different alternatives of having all this investment going into business as usual infrastructure or choosing the best available technologies. And clearly the latter part, the, the, the latter option is not only uh, helping us or giving us a chance to save the climate, it's also radically reducing the cost, the overall cost for urban infrastructure in the longer run. But for this route to be taken, we now already need very aggressive targets set on the urban level uh, in terms of emission reduction and renewable energy production. And we need to make sure that the cities are built using the best practice urban planning methods and the best available technologies. But in order for that to happen, we also need to make sure that the places where urbanization is happening at the fastest rates, that is in Af Africa and Asia, we develop innovative financing st uh, strategies in order to enable um, uh, the cities to meet the upfront capital costs for the better alternative. The longer term, it pays off, but in the short term, we need uh, about 6% more uh, uh, capital to do this choice, the better choice. And all this is the reason why WWF is engaged in cities and why we developed the Earth Hour City Challenge, which is a recurrent year-long program where we invite the cities to demonstrate the leadership necessary by publicly reporting on a globally recognized reporting platform, commitments and actions to transition toward a sustainable and renewable future. Uh, the cities, they report these commitments and then an international jury of experts from all the key organizations like the C40 Network, UN Habitat, uh, Development Banks, ICLEI, academic institutions, they assess uh, the data and then on a level playing field, the jury selects the most ambitious city for each country and one for the world. And these winners are entitled the Earth Hour Capitals of the Year. This is the platform where the so far up uh, around 200 Earth Hour City Challenge candidates have been reporting. And it's also 
a platform that the major city networks and the UN have agreed as the central repository for collecting city-level data and feeding it into the global climate negotiations. So the reason for doing this is, of course, to raise the ambition of the global climate negotiations. You may be aware that cities altogether already have committed to more carbon reduction than the, all the nations altogether. So by putting this on a transparent platform, it will hopefully enable increased national level ambitions and by transparently documenting the actions taken by cities, we also wish to encourage finance actors and also governments to help remove obstacles and help cities access the finance needed to scale up the most uh, promising climate actions. Now, in order to get elected officials to really do this uh, commitment to help the cities, they need support. And that's why we coupled the Earth Hour City Challenge initiative with a yearly social media campaign where we engage the public, we educate the public by promoting the leading examples from the City Challenge cities and showing them what's possible within the areas of transport, building, waste, energy production. And we invite the public to express support for strong sustainability action. And just with the pilot campaigns, we've received within a couple of weeks hundreds of thousands of expression of support for an urban development that can enable citizens to live more sustainable lifestyles. And we have lots of great examples also coming from the leading City Challenge cities. For example, Vancouver demonstrates the value of strong, ambitious targets, and they've been working on green, build, build, green district development and a lot on sustainable mobility. And that has paid off both by delivering on the ambitious climate targets, but also by doubling the number of green jobs and cementing the position of Vancouver as one of the most attractive cities of the world. And in Cape Town, we have seen the excellent combination of equity challenges with climate challenges in large-scale programs. For example, the program developing solar power, uh, solar heat for uh, the more uh, thousands of poor households in the poorer districts of Cape Town. And this year, the global winner, Seoul, is a great case in point of how you can implement the latest available technologies at scale with tens of thousands of installations of solar power as part of an overall ambition of the city to turn the whole city into a solar power plant. Last but not least, I want to mention Gothenburg. Gothenburg, the Earth Hour capital of Sweden, was a strong contender in the City Challenge this year, and the jury uh, provided special mention to this city for its climate strategy and its ability to think outside of the box, which partly demonstrates in uh, the choice to set also consumption-based emission targets, thus looking at the lifestyle of the citizens, but also, of course, in its uh, pioneering use of green city bonds to finance big win uh, in, uh, initiatives in the city as part of the transition of the city, such as biogas production and, of course, the electromobility initiatives. So, WWF looks forward to keep highlighting really promising and impressive climate action at the local level and to keep building this critical mass of cities that publicly report strong commitments and climate actions. But the cities can't do it alone. So we will also keep encouraging, uh, encouraging citizens, finance actors, business, gov governments to do their share in speeding up this transition needed on the local level and the good news is that this is not only about saving the climate. This is a fantastic opportunity to enable more attractive lifestyles and to build social and economic resilience for both cities and businesses and our communities. Thank you for your attention. I hope I kept to the time. Thank you, Karina. Thank you.